So we're here with Mr. Larkin Rose, author of The Most Dangerous Superstition, and we want to know what do you think about the public school system and what should parents know as they look at all these various problems like Common Core curriculum and uh, numerous uh, problems in the schools, what should they know and what do you think about the public school system? Well, the, you know, on the one hand, you have what, what parents actually want. You know, a parent concerned with their child wants their child to get a good education, to know what's going on in the world, to, to understand math, reading, history, whatever, so that they can get along in the world. And I think it's, you know, most parents probably assume that the purpose of school is that, and it's not. <laughs> And so a lot of people, when they, they look at the, the results that schools get, think, wow, this, you know, it's not working. It actually is working, but it's to accomplish something completely different, which is not to um, empower and, and enlighten your children. Um, it's more often to, to basically to train them to be obedient. And so the parent, you know, the easiest thing is, well, I'll dump them off to an institution and hope the institution does a good job. Um, unfortunately, that is not at all the, the, you know, the way that your child will be best served if you actually want your child to be empowered and enlightened and curious and, uh, and you can actually, you know, you can look up what the American school system is based on, um, the, the Prussian system, and if I told you what it was, you'd say that's a crazy conspiracy, look up the Prussian uh, indoctrination system, it, it's all public, it's not a, a secret, and you'll realize why the public schools do such a bad job because they're actually doing a good job of something completely different. And as a parent, um, we, re we unschooled our daughter, who's now 18, um, and it it's a very different experience if you, basically you're not raising your child to be an obedient subject, you're, you're showing them how to be a human being. You know, they, they start out as little incompetent people, but they're already people. And they don't really need to be, you know, trained to be this obedient robot. Um, you know, I think the, the, the moral way to, to look at your child is it's your job to help them become what they're supposed to be. And if you ask me, what they're not supposed to be is an unthinking, easily controlled, you know, commodity. Um, and so, you know, I know a lot of people who assumed the schools were going to, you know, be in the best interest of the children, but then they started looking into things like, like unschooling and, and different kinds of education, and they realized that when you figure out what best sort of feeds a child's interest and curiosity and, and lets them learn about the world, it looks very, very different from what the, the schools actually do. And it can be kind of inconvenient because you're going down a different route. It's like, well, the thing that everybody does is send your kid off to school. Um, but unfortunately, if you want, if you really want to do what's best for your child, you have to go a very different route. And it really, it cannot be done in a normal school setting. Um, teaching somebody to be a moral, responsible human being, it's really the opposite of what the schools teach, no matter how well-intentioned the teachers may be. I don't mean this is a big evil conspiracy and all the teachers are trying to be malicious. It's just the, the setting, the format, the template as it's been for you know centuries is not the way to create a you know physically and mentally healthy, productive, useful, compassionate human being. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's so much to say about it, but mainly, if you understand that there are other options, there are other ideas, and they work a whole lot better than what most people accept as you know the normal way that, that school works, there is a there is a far better way to raise children. That's great. And the question a lot of parents ask themselves is, do I have the ability to homeschool or unschool? And most of them feel that they don't. And then the other concern is they don't want to ruin their child's life by doing something that's you know, non-mainstream. Can you talk to parents who are afraid of ruining their child's life by homeschooling or just doing something non-mainstream? Yeah, there, there's a several very common, you know, worries. One is, oh, they won't have any social skills. In school, you don't learn social skills. You learn to sit down and shut up. Um, whereas living life, because that's really what unschooling is, it's you identify, you know, this is, this is a small person. They don't know much. They don't know how to do much but they learn how to be a human being from watch other people being human beings. 
Whereas a classroom is a completely artificial environment, you don't learn social skills there. You learn how to you know, be with a bunch of people who are just like you and sit still and not say anything, and then there's an authority figure that you obey. That's not what the rest of the world is. Um, so one is, is like social skills, which we had no problem with with our daughter Alyssa. She has you know, a million friends and it, you know, has her own social schedule all over the place. Um, and then another one is like, will they learn things and will they, it, it, it's so much if you, if you are of the mindset that children don't care about anything and aren't curious and you have to like force them to, to, to learn things, not only is that not true, it doesn't even work. Like if you let them pursue what they're interested in and you can, you can guide them and, and nudge them in directions, but if they want to learn, you know, a child who wants to learn something, they're going to learn it. You know, that, that's, that's what a child's brain does, is it learns things. And I actually think school is like the best way to kill the desire to learn, is stick them in the chair and have them, you know, make them listen to things they don't want to hear. Um, so in, a, in most cases, you're going to find that it, basically if you unleash your child, they're going to learn things. And you can like, you know, find mentors and, you know, if you, if you don't know that much about this subject, you find somebody who does and they hang out with them and they learn things and, you know, there's literally a thousand different ways you can do it. You don't have to know everything in the world to have your ch child, especially in the, you know, the age of the internet, you don't have to know everything in the world for your child to, to learn all sorts of different things about, you know, everything they need to, to, to survive and thrive in society. Uh, basically, you just, you know, give them some resources, give them some nudges in the right direction, and make sure they're around people who actually know stuff, and especially let your children follow their interests. And I would point out, you know, the last concern people often have is, well, what if my child, like, is never interested in reading or never interested in that? People do things at different times, and that's not the end of the world. I mean, there are a bunch of people who are geniuses who didn't even talk until they were, like, six. And it doesn't happen that it does, doesn't have to all happen at the same time on the same schedule. And again, children learn what they are interested in, and maybe right now they're interested in that thing, and later they'll be interested in reading. Like our daughter, when she decided she wanted to be able to look at these things and know what they said, she taught herself to read very quickly. We we read to her and we showed her the sounds of the letters. Mostly she did it herself a lot faster than they learn in school. So part of it is just having faith in, in your own child's curiosity and desire to learn. Help them and mostly don't hinder them. <laughs> and school mostly hinders them from learning what they, what they want to learn. Awesome. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share? Uh, that's about it. I guess the, the main sort of philosophical thing is I think the best way to, to raise a child, you know, this is just my opinion, is uh, from the beginning, I understand that this, it's a human being. And like I said, it doesn't know much, can't do much, but the way to show it how to be a proper human being is be a proper human being to the child and they will learn by example. Instead of sit there and I'm gonna tell you how to behave, that doesn't work, they, they mimic. So if you want your child to be a good person, be a good person in front of them. Awesome, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.